Okay, so the third book which I've got out of the collection um, of the Sundial Society to show you is a book that's much more, um, much more academic and intellectual in its tone than the um, books which I showed at the beginning of the session. It's this book here, Primitive Sundials or Scratch Dials, containing a list of those in Somerset by Dom Ethelbert Horn, published in 1917. Now, Ethelbert Horn um, was um, a clergyman and a monk, um, and I, I wasn't aware of what the title Dom referred to, but it is apparently applied to monks of the Benedictine and Cistercian orders. Um, so that's who Ethelbert Horn was. He um, was born in 1858. He lived until 1952. Um, and he converted to Catholicism in 1879 and became a priest in 1880. Um, as well as being a priest, though, he was, in the manner of um, many people of his age, he was an antiquary, he was a noted archaeologist and folklorist as well, um, who's a fellow of the Society of Antiquaries. Um, and he managed to combine the two um, in that he was a custodian of the relics at Downside Abbey, um, where obviously he was, he was based. Um, he was also one of the directors of excavations at Glastonbury Abbey and later on became the abbot of Glastonbury. So um, he was very much involved in monastic and ecclesiastical architecture and um, archaeology. Um, however, he was also a keen amateur um, photographer. He published on all sorts of different subjects, um, subjects including holy wells, mistletoe, um, archaeological excavations, and even I found a reference to um, an article that he'd written entitled Some Queer Somerset Folk. So he was obviously also publishing on um, the lives and, and histories of people um, in the area where he was doing his research. So this book here which he published in 1917, as I say. This is um, an early account of research into scratch dials. Now, scratch dials, as illustrated just here, are um, types of sundials which are not maybe as formal as um, the sundials which were shown in the previous two books that I looked at. So they are quite common on medieval churches, um, and they take various forms, but they are basically, if I can find another picture to, to show you, they are basically um, a series of radiating lines coming from a point. Um, they're usually scratched directly onto the fabric of the church um, and they don't have uh, the numbers of hours. So they don't say this is, this is 12, this is 1, this is 2 o'clock. Um, they're often not um, equidistant. The lines are often not equidistant from each other. And as is said in the preface to this book, um, sometimes they're found in very unusual places, places where the sun wouldn't necessarily get to very easily and very readily. So at the time of writing, these were something of a mystery. Um, and apparently there had been some discussion um, in the antiqua antiquarian press about um, what they actually were, whether they were even sundials at all, um, how they might have been used, um, whether they were something completely different. Now, in the beginning of this book, um, Horn talks about the fact that um, discussion of these has mainly been based, uh, up to this point, had mainly been based on a lot of conjecture. Um, and was, um, this was partly because the people who were talking about it had only looked at a few examples. So he decided to take photographs of um, all of these uh, scratch dials that he could find in Somerset and compare the photographs to each other. So rather than relying on his memory, he was relying on photographs. And also, this is basically the first kind of large scale comparison of this sort of dial in order to make some kind of scientific study of it. It is based in, almost entirely on the dials in Somerset, um, but it was it's, it's an important work as a kind of step forward in the way of researching these sorts of dials. Um, and the, the conclusion that he came to within this book um, is that these dials, rather than recording the time of day, they were intended to record the time when mass was to be held. So that was, that was his suggestion, was that these, that's why they don't have hours on, um, why so, the lines are something, you know, sometimes there are only one or two lines, why they're not um, necessarily equidistant from each other, because they're related to um, church timings rather than, rather than clock timings. So this book is, um, the, um, the, our, our contact in the Sundial Society referred to this book as being maybe not the most interesting to look at, but um, certainly in terms of the study of sundials, um, this is really very interesting and um, an important piece of work from a rather interesting um, author as well.